So what you're looking at is these sparks are actually big pieces of charcoal that's mixed in with the black powder. When we first start, that particular composition can be used to make turbillions, rockets, shells, stars, just about anything. When you're making fountains, they're fairly forgiving. The nice thing about them is that you get to light them if you make them. And if they blow up, you get to be the shield for the people behind you. All right, now just for comparison, what I'm gonna do is fire another fountain, but this time I'm gonna put a little aluminum flake in it, just as if I had taken aluminum foil, run it through your household shredder, then put it into a blender, and then chop it up and put it in this mix. All right, shoot number two. Now we use kitty litter as a nozzle, and so as this thing burns, it makes more and more pressure, and it'll shoot it higher and higher. The trick is to get it as high as you can without blowing up. Now, if you want to be a really good pyrotechnician, you start every story with this line. So I said to my friend, hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is instead of aluminum, we're gonna scrape some titanium. We're gonna put it in with a mixture of bismuth trioxide and uh, basically magnesium. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna form plain old molten bismuth, but it's gonna be above its boiling point, and so it should crack. All right, shoot number three. Now this fountain is in a cone. So as it burns, the surface area gets larger and larger. And if you pray properly, you should get to about 25 feet. If it gets above 25 feet, it'll probably blow up. Every one of those little sparks is molten bismuth. You'll notice you'll see a red star come out of the now and then. Um, those are all made with strontium nitrate, any kind of strontium compound. So that's one six feet. black powder and we're going to make it into a hockey puck and then we're going to put a little loose black powder underneath it and we're going to shoot it straight up in the air. Pretty straightforward. But now just to get something different to work with, we're going to take that puck and break it into pieces and then do the same thing, put some black powder and throw it up in the air, but instead of one puck, there'll be a bunch. That's called a mine, or if it happens to a shell, it's called a lot of bad luck. Because if the shells that you shoot in the air do that, um, they're not supposed to. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this, we're gonna take the black powder, put it in the bottom of a little Dixie cup. We're gonna put a little sphere that has hollow pellets in it, and those pellets are gonna have different chemicals, different colors. Use strontium for red, barium for green, copper for blue. Okay, so we'll shoot uh, one shell at a time. All right, go ahead. All right, now we're going to switch to the other firing system. 
So what we do, now those shelves were only one and three quarter inch in diameter, and they're basically the largest that we want to put in the consumer's hands, because occasionally uh, people don't read the instructions. I'm sure everyone here has read every instruction book that comes with everything. When you buy a hammer, and the warning label is three feet by three feet, and the hammer's instruction manual is 47 pages, I'm sure we diligently read those. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're, we're gonna shift to a few shells that are a little bit bigger than one and three quarters. We're gonna go to something that's two and three quarters in diameter. All right, shoot that big one. That yellow came from sodium. One more. All right, so what we've done there actually push the button on the wrong kid. <laughs> uh, no. Basically, that's a rocket. So what you do is you take that black powder and put it in a cardboard tube, take a hammer, you beat on it until it's as, as compact as you can, and you use that to lift the shell, which I'll show you next. So number three. My mistake. Thank you. Um, all right. So that one was a cake. So basically, what we do is we take the tubes instead of the rocket, we turn the rocket upside down and have it kick out several shells. So you can get a cake that shoots four shells: 16, 20, 100, 200. All right, so if you take all the stuff that's in the cake and you put them one on top of the other, you make a Roman candle. So a Roman candle is simply one tube that you light from the top. All right, we got some wandering nomads coming through the farming area. We'll hold the show up until they get into a safe area. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the stuff that goes in the cake. Instead of having separate tubes, we're just going to load these stuff, these little submunitions, one on top of the other, and light them from the top. And as they burn, they'll kick off the top one, and they'll keep working their way down. Let's go. 
flower is made with a different chemical composition. Red strontium, red yellow, sodium, green barium, blue copper. And this thing will burn from the top down. And as it does it, it will change the shell. That one tube has got 176 stars. potassium benzoate. And what this fuel is, it has a ring on it and we're going to burn it and that's going to break the ring in half. And then those two halves are going to burn again. So it's going to be sort of a high fast burn, slow burn, fast burn, slow burn. And that oscillation is going to be 22,000 times a second. Number nine. Now, that one's a small one. You'll see some bigger whistles in some of the bigger shells. Um, the sparks that you saw were just titanium. You can see where it was. All right, I think we're ready to go in. Uh, stand by. So we'll do a couple of shells with some different effects. It's called the strobe effect. take a plastic bicycle wheel. We're going to take that rocket that kind of was over to your right before, and we're going to glue about six or eight of them, and we're going to use that short pyro whistle that we saw, and we're going to make the thrust. So you'll have a screaming rocket that's going to spin this bicycle wheel, and then the twist is going to give it some lift, and it's going to fly up into the sky. All right, fire number 10. about Girondola is, is that that one was probably six inches in diameter. Um, when we do national competitions, we do a little bit bigger ones. Uh, we've done some that were 12 feet in diameter. Uh, the thing about Girondola is, is it's like a baseball game. You better keep your eye on the ball because that something that big goes up, it has to come down. So you'll never see it in a public display because it constantly searches for the audience and then drops on their head. All right, so let's go right into our first show. Josh Draskowski is going to try his very first um, public display. He's been a Cracker Jack member for years and years, but we talked him into it that uh, we think he should do the display and we should sit back and watch. Taking a bunch of Cracker Jacks actually to set this up. He's been working on it, just setting up for three days. Um, we're going to be doing some high. Thank <laughs> you. 
in the nationals. He's won regionals. He's won everything. I don't know why he just doesn't go away. But he's going to put on a little show for us.